Have you found yourself wanting to take data from a form and send that information into a subform? Or if you're thinking of it like a database, taking information from your parent record and sending it to a child linked record. Well, now you can do that with this new feature from Fillout. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, a no-code implementation partner. And if you're not using Fillout, you are missing out on the best form software that's out there that lets you integrate tools like Airtable and SmartSuite. You can sign up with an affiliate link in the description below. And we also have a link to our free course on getting started with Fillout. Now we're going to use a couple of inventory management use cases today, but of course this can be extrapolated for whatever industry you're in. So right here in Fillout, we're going to create a purchase order and we've got an order date and we're adding some purchase order lines. So we have the ability to add multiple products to this single purchase order. And what we want to be able to do is have a single purchase order for only a certain type of manufacturer. Now the URL parameters piece, that is like if we were to be in a client portal or an employee portal, and we wanted to be able to send that context of the manufacturer in the URL when we click on that link. So to get started here, we're going to click on our purchase order lines. And I've set this up so that we're creating new records and we're only going to show new records. So we don't want people to be able to choose from existing order lines that we've made in the past. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and edit our record creation form. So here is our order line, and we want to be able to capture both a product and a quantity for that order line. The first thing we'll do is we'll go into our settings, and we're going to set up a new URL parameter. And we'll call this manufacturer ID. And let's give it a default value. We'll plug in an ID of 101, and we'll add that. We'll head back into that child form for the order lines. And here, let's add some filtering. We can click on advanced and we'll go down to filters and we'll say, hey, we only want to show the products when the manufacturer ID is equal to this URL parameter that we just created, the manufacturer ID. And then we'll return to our parent form. We'll need to make sure that this is published. And now we have our published form. You can see in the URL bar, we've got our manufacturer ID is set to 101 by default. So when we click on purchase order lines, and from here we add a product, we are now seeing the sub filtered list to only the products where the manufacturer ID equals 101. And just to show you another example, let's change this instead of 101 to be when the manufacturer ID equals 104. We'll add our purchase order lines. From here, we add our products. And now you can see that there's three different products available that tie to that 104 manufacturer ID. So this is a way that we can take information from the parent level's URL parameters and be able to send that down into the child form for the purposes of filtering. But we can also send information from the parent form to a child form without URL parameters. And we can do this based off of data that we're selecting on the parent form. So in this case, we're doing a pick list for inventory. And we're going to say that when we select a warehouse location, we want that to be copied down to all of the child lines. So when we're doing zone picking, we always want it to be for the same exact warehouse. And we don't want the user to have to select the warehouse every single time. So in this case, we've got our warehouse location. Let's actually go to the zone picking here. And we're going to tell it that we can only create those new records. Let's edit our record creation form here for a second where we're choosing that warehouse location. So again, we'll go into our settings and create a new URL parameter here. And we're going to add this one and call it location ID. I'm not going to add a sample value this time. We'll add that parameter. And then we'll come back to our edit form here. And if we click on warehouse location, we'll want to make sure that we have a default value for that location. And we'll have it tied to our URL parameter and that location ID. So that's now going to default in that value as the location itself. From here, we can return to our parent form. And now we need to tell it to send the information from the warehouse location that we select and send it through to that child. We can click on zone picking and scroll down to create records. And here's where we're going to pass that information to the sub form by clicking the configure button. And here we're going to add new and we're going to say that location ID, which is on our child or our sub form. And we're going to pick a reference and we're going to use it from our current page. And we're going to use it based off of our warehouse location. And we're going to use the record ID of our warehouse location. We'll click done. We'll go ahead and publish this. And now we have our form and we can add our warehouse location. Let's say that this is A1. 
And now when we add a zone to pick from and choose that warehouse location, it's pre-populated for us. And we could actually go a step further and even hide the field on the form so we don't have to worry about the user accidentally changing that. We could still send the information in the background. It's going to land there in the database on the back end, but the user doesn't even have to see that information in the first place. I hope this has been helpful to see the power that you have in being able to send information to subforms using Fillout. If you have any questions on how to get up and running with your no-code implementation, reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.